I see people who run open source projects. I see people who run um, very complicated local first projects. I can barely explain. We see. I see people who run SaaS companies with like ridiculous amounts of revenue. You guys know much more about these topics than I do in many cases. Okay, please share your POV in the chat. Okay, this is meant to be request for comment. Okay. Um, okay, quickly about me, so that you have a little bit of context what I'm usually interested in. Um, I do first check, first round investments. I mostly do what I would call weird stuff. Global work, niche technology, space tech, sci-fi, anything that's kind of cool. And anything that's a little bit like off the beaten path of, uh, path of what's currently hype, what's currently like hot and all this kind of stuff. I don't like um, the trend of investors just like rushing after certain hot topics. I, I try to stay away of, of this as much as possible. If everybody invests into something, most likely there's no more alpha, more, not, no more, nothing left for anymore. It's not interesting as well. Anyway, uh, things that I usually like are things that are, uh, are very unique and are able to get mine share. I quickly want to show you a few things of my investments I did in the past so that you kind of get a feeling. All of that is first round or first check. So for example, I was first round remote.com, global hiring platform. Highly recommend you using it if you are hiring anywhere globally. I also recommend you using it even if you don't because they can run your whole payroll even just for your local company. Uh, Luma Labs, um, AI for 3D, um, basically photorealistic um, 3D renderings based on a few videos. Uh, they can also do text to 3D. It's, it's the closest thing I know to digital sorcery, to be honest. Um, Acquire.com, um, quick shout out, if your company doesn't work, that's a good place to sell it, okay? Acquire.com is a marketplace to sell uh, startups. Um, Set, uh, if you guys are programmers, please try out Set. It's like, my opinion, going to be the next big editor. Uh, it's ridiculously fast compared to everything out there. I highly recommend their open source and everything. Yes, Mac switch to remote, awesome. My marketing here is working. Um, uh, Upstash, um, it's basically Redis in the cloud uh, without, like Redis on, on, the, on the edge, without any of the problems that Redis usually have. They can also do Kafka, vector databases, and all kinds of stuff. All of their things are, it's basically a custom built database. These people are insane, it's meant for high performance. Um, a few more recent investment, Peersight, satellite data um, company, they're doing um, SAR satellites, which is basically really, really big region, um, a, a kind of uh, a, um, sensor that can essentially go into structures of buildings. Um, India-based uh, Ahmedabad, shout out to Gaurav and the team, uh, amazing company. Um, I also want to like share a few of my latest investments, which people usually don't do, and all of that is super fresh. So. Uh, I think I have wired in every case my money, so let's see. Uh, number one, Structify. It's basically data scraping on demand. Uh, you give them a schema, they give you a database that automatically gets updated. Uh, think of like scraping, but including data resolution, and you can basically give them any kind of topic. Like you want any kind of data in the internet, they give it to you. Number two, um, Evitol, uh, in Indian, another Indian uh, deep tech company. I want to do next week a deep, uh, like a deep dive into the con of the, the the startup ecosystem of uh, India, and also like especially focusing on deep tech. Like deep tech in India is popping. This team, ex Lilium founders, uh, are doing uh, uh, essentially planes, six seaters, uh, completely electrical, starting in Bangalore and multiple other cities. Last one, global. Telephone provider. I think this is not yet launched, so I will like just quickly skim. But like, if you are living global, uh, take a look at them. Okay, enough about me. This show is not about me. Okay, um, this show is about the founders who are joining. Okay, goals. Uh, we're doing an open off office hour. This is meant to be very interactive. Okay, we help each other. If you can um, uh, join the discussion, and if you have own challenges, we want to like can we do them in the end. Uh, to everybody joining today, uh, ask direct, honest questions. Uh, this is not a podcast. I don't care to look professional. I want to help you. Uh, yeah. And number, the most important one, it's all of us like hang out, have fun, chill. Like, let's see where this is going. This is better. Give me feedback afterwards. Today in the menu, quickly a few housekeeping rules, and then afterwards we start. Number one, ask questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, you are in camera. I don't think this platform has yet a function to delete comments, okay? So please do not say anything I should ban you for because I literally can't, okay? Uh, and yeah, uh, this isn't Shark Tank. Uh, we won't do pitches. I want to have the founders explaining what they do, obviously, so that we have all context. But this isn't meant to be a pitch show, okay? We want to help people here, nothing else. 
I will not invest in the winners. This is not an investment show. Okay. Uh, I have a really weird taste in investments. I don't, I'm not doing this to find investments. I won't give advice to everybody. I don't, I have very rare specific knowledge in a very freakish small group of topics. You know, I honestly don't think this will be uh, possible for me. Okay. This is like where you guys come in. Um, and so to repeat, help, don't be a dick and let's be chill. This is better. I expect the technology to break. Um, I'm actually surprised that we didn't have more problems yet. Um, and please send me feedback. Like, how can I improve all of this? Okay. Okay. Let's get started. Um, it's the op open office hour. Please feedback afterwards. Uh, what we do now is we switch to Zoom with our first person, um, Toby. Uh, Toby has the shortest CV we will ever see as a founder. Um, he's pretty epic. Let's get Toby on the show. Let me switch to Zoom. And by the way, I'm using Zoom for all of this because I have absolutely no idea how to do anything professional with this here. Okay. Toby, welcome to the show. I will switch here to... The normal microphone, uh, Toby, turn on your microphone. Perfect. Yes. So guys, question number one, do you hear Zoom? Toby, can you say something for a second? Everyone. <laughs> I think it should work. Can somebody write in the chat if this is working? Please. I think we should start. Yes, it works. Okay. I think I think that means it works. Yes, it works. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Toby. Hey. Hi. I heard you're a little bit nervous. Is this true? A little bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> first time for everything. You know, first time for both of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> sweet. Um, so, um, like what, what would be useful for you today? What do you want to do? I obviously want to hear what you're working on. You know, I want to hear about a little bit about you. Yeah. What would be useful for you? Well, you know, I, um, I like you, I'm more of a, a tech nerd than an actual business person. Um, <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to learn more about, you know, how the investment process works. I'm mm -hmm. still only 15. So um, I'm also managing school and starting uh, my startup. Um, so it's definitely quite a balance. Um, so, you know, tips on how to uh, balance everything, how to get investment, all that stuff would mm -hmm. be wonderful. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, let's start quickly so that everybody has context. Like, tell me a bit about yourself um, and tell me a bit about, um, um, tell me a bit about like uh, a beam, okay? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Toby. I'm a 15-year-old um, web developer, I guess, and uh, newly founder uh, from London. Um, I'm creating this thing called Beam. Um, so Beam is essentially this thinking machine uh, which integrates with all the tools you use daily um, and it learns from you to create a personalized experience. So um, other tools like ChatGPT have very basic memory of you mm -hmm. and every time you start a new conversation it's you're basically starting from a blank, uh, blank state um, mm -hmm. and Beam, you know, Beam remembers all of the context about you and will integrate with all of your favorite services. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome you, you're 15 you said right thanks i'm 15 yeah nice mm -hmm. and you built this all on your own all by myself yeah awesome do you want to show it to us yeah totally uh let me share my screen where is it here we go cool can you see that okay yes perfectly great so um my favorite example is you know sort of planning trips and stuff uh so i'm going to give an example of you know i'm going to a trip with a friend so actually can you I'm... zoom in a bit because i think this is a bit too small on this chat like, oh, like wait, one second i have a better idea yeah. give me one second i think this works make it a little bit bigger if you can by the way trust to... you okay perfect thanks great so in this example um i'm going to say i'm planning a trip to my house with my friend alex and what should we do so immediately we see um uh, images uh, that it's that it's um, fetched from the web, um, and what's interesting here is it's also got um, it shows us its sources. So a big problem with AI is it, it doesn't provide its sources, and Beam does, um, and this can also provide links for us to check out, um, which is also really helpful. This is really uh, cool. So thank you. It's remember my name, 
Um, it's remembered that I've mentioned Alex in the past um, and Alex likes art, so it's suggested that we check out the Louvre. Um, and, you know, it suggests now about Paris having good food, uh, gives us a restaurant and now infers that we want, you know, we want to be close to that, uh, to the centre. So it, um, it then suggests us a good hotel for that. And then it remembers that it's going to provide links and tells you at the end there. Um, so I'll then say to it, awesome. Um, I'd like to do this. So Beam will then look at my calendar um, and will send immediately update my calendar to um, on the days that I'm available within the certain parameters that I've given it over a weekend and later this month. Um, and it will also send an invite to Alex. Um, and now I can ask Beam, so could you, could you remind me to book everything? So Beam pulls up my to-do list and will update it with book loof tickets, uh, book the restaurant and book the hotel. Um, and it shows me down here. So if I want to reverse that action, I can just click on that. Um, so I'll tell Beam that we're all booked now. Um, so it will it will infer, oh, I'll zoom out a bit so you can see <laughs> that. Um, it will infer that um, uh, that I finished the task that it's just assigned to my to-do list. And we'll show this here. So I can just click on this and it will then mark those tasks as done. Mm -hmm. um, so then I can just say here. So I'm concerned about the weather. So I'll say, what will the weather be like? And it will remember we're talking about Paris and remember the dates we've mentioned. And we'll then go and fetch a weather API and provide me this information here. Um, and now, um, so, you know, obviously no one wants to be working over their holidays. So I'll say, I'd rather not work whilst there. What do I have to do before I, I go? So Beam will then fetch from Linear um, and show me the tasks I have to complete. Um, and these are all it presumes I can get these done before uh, the date I'm leaving. Uh, so yeah, that's Beam. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, how Thank did you, you how did you technically build this? Like, what's the stack? Like, what did you use? Um, so Beam is built on well the actual AI. Uh, right now, this is just Grok because uh, Grok's fast. But I'm also the main the main uh, LLM powering Beam is Claude mm -hmm. uh, Claude Three Opus, um, and so we we fetch upon. Uh, the Bing API, and we mm -hmm. read the top eight uh, web results. And if they fail, it won't include it in its response. So we've only had four that have worked here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably they're just blocking uh, blocks or something. Um, and so this, um, right now, the to-do lists are just, um, just you know, they're, uh, what's the word? Uh, it, basically, they're not integrated with any other services. Um, but I'd like to be able to build integrations with them. Um, uh, things like Todoist and stuff like that. Um, the uh, the calendar, we're just using a normal, uh, sorry, not the calendar. Yes, well, the calendar, we use Google Calendar, um, mm -hmm. so we can integrate with, with your Google Calendar. So uh, you can see tasks you need to get done, so you can, um, this doesn't work right now, but you at some point in the future, you'll be able to ask Beam, you know, uh, what date's my free, and it'll show you a snapshot of your calendar and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it can read your calendar right now, but can't, um, we don't have an interface to display that yet. Mm -hmm. um, and whether we're just fetching upon a normal weather API and linear is obviously from linear's API. Mm -hmm. What would be useful for you, like before we get into the investment discussion, like what would be useful for you um, otherwise? Like uh, the people who are watching, we have currently, and no stress, roughly 1,000 people watching. Mm -hmm. Uh, wow! Yeah, Gosh. yeah. I didn't expect that. I think honestly, Twitter numbers are fake. I don't believe that. Um, <laughs> to, to, like, if you're actually watching, please write something in the Twitter chat or in the uh, Algoria chat. Like, this is like a wild number. One thousand people is insane. Anyway, um, what would be useful for you? Like, uh, how can people help you? A part of like investment, obviously. Um, well, so apart from investment, I'd like as many as many signups as possible. Um, we've got about two hundred people on the wait list. Um, which is a good amount, but I think we could get more. Um, you know, I, I really see this going somewhere. Um, you know, at some point in the future, I'd like to be able to integrate with other platforms. Um, and that, that would be awesome. Um, I'm currently trying to find a team uh, to help build build Beam out with me, because uh, all of this has been, everything you're seeing here, I've, I've built by myself. 
So, um, so when yeah, you, when you I, say you know, we, that, when you say we, you just mean yourself, right? Just me, myself. Make yeah, me feel yeah, better yeah. if I say we. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do the same. Uh, it sounds like way more yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. I had the same. I was exactly. like, I was selling to really, really large um, companies uh, in my uh, yeah. like early page of my career, and I was like so terrified that, that they actually, because like, they actually wanted to accept my offer, and I was like just like freaking yeah. out. And then in the meeting, I said like, yeah, that sounds great, but I first have to just discuss this with my team to make sure we can actually fulfill <laughs> blah 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 blah. And I was like sweating, yeah. you know, and there was no team, obviously. I was just like trying to get out yeah, of the meeting yeah. and then afterwards be like, okay, I can do it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so regarding investment, um, why do you want to invest? Like you basically said you want to hire a few people. This is, this is correct? Exactly, yeah. So I'd like to expand Beam to other platforms. Um, you know, I, um, I, I, I use my phone quite a lot, as quite a lot of people do. Um, and I'd like to build out an iOS app because right now Beam only exists on the web. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we, we've got powerful APIs that we can use. Um, so a lot of it would just be, you know, building an app out. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of potential here. Um, I believe at least where well, I'm biased. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I've never, I've never used a platform which, um, an AI platform which, before which, which does this. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I believe it to be quite unique. Um, and I think it has a lot of potential. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, what do you know about investments? What do you not know? Like what would be, uh, like, what are the things that would be useful for you to know? Um, I mean, I, I'd like to learn the stages, um, you know, cause I, I, um, I wouldn't be looking for a crazy amount of money or anything. Um, but you know, I, I guess from, from your perspective as, as a person who invests, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what would you look out uh, when look out for when people approach you for investments? Like what stands out to you? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Do you mind if we quickly switch and I share screen for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let me see if I can properly share the screen. Um, wait a minute. I'm a, yeah, why not? This should work. Um, I, I, I feel like using a computer for the very first time. I have so many <laughs> things going on on my browser, uh, on my computer right now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Sweet. Um, you see this, right? Let me make this. Yeah. Up. Okay, cool. So um, I want to give you like two quick frameworks, okay? Um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you asked before about stages, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, basically, the, the way that this works, while you, the company gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? There's like different stages, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I, um, yeah. you heard about them, pre-seed, seed, series A and so on and so on. Like, I don't need to bore you with this yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. The most important thing to understand is that early on, it's way more about the expectations in the future. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then about the reality in a way. Okay. I think this mm -hmm. is obvious, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The reasoning here is actually, let me like add you here so that we see you too. Um, the, the, the reason is because quite frankly, you don't know where it's going. Okay. So I think that's clear. Okay. So, um, yeah. I will go in a, in a few other calls today and a few more topics here, but like the, the two frameworks I want to give you. Okay. Number one is what I think of as a 3d space. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, like my be a beautiful draw. Um, so basically we have execution, um, innovation and credentials. Okay. Uh, execution, like how far are you, you know, like hasn't done anything to like $5 trillion in revenue, uh, innovation, like this is completely a copy of something that exists, you know, or it's like slightly different down to, yeah. um, fundamentally different. I, I like the language and everything, uh, Chico, mm -hmm. uh, with de slightly delaying Chico, just FYI. Okay. Um, and number three is credentials. Okay. So, um, like who is the person involved? Who are the investors involved? All this kind of stuff, you know, this is like, um, yeah. and in my, in my experience, you should be good on two of them to raise around, like from a power position, mm -hmm. from like a strong position. Right. Um, or yeah. really, really good on one. So, uh, for example, you have like absurd amount of execution. Like if you make trillions of dollars in revenue, your company is successful no matter who you are, whatever, right? Uh, mm. Or if yeah. you're, if you previously started uh, SpaceX, you know, it <laughs> honestly doesn't matter how far you executed so far or like how great the idea is. If you want like the founder of Instagram can launch a new app, you know what I mean? Like they get, doesn't matter, mm. you know what I mean? Um, 
for you, uh, why this is interesting here is for two things. Number one, the problem that you have is there's like the whole space of like AI is currently extremely noisy. There's like dozens mm, of absolutely. people doing this, right? And there's dozens mm -hmm. of people doing like this assistant in AI kind of idea. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, mm. the, the problem you have is if I invest in this, you know, I don't know how different this actually is. Like, is this different enough that you can get mindshare? Okay. And this brings me, mm -hmm. oops, this brings me to my second concept. Uh, and then I'll go back to the other two. Okay. Like sure. imagine this is a human brain. Okay. This looks a little bit different, but like you get the idea. Okay. Um, yeah. I strongly believe that we have boxes in our brain. Okay. And boxes in which we remember stuff. So when I tell you project management software, there will be like five mm -hmm. things that come up because you use project management software regularly, right? Uh, like you will yeah. think of like linear, Jira, and like three, four others, you know? People who don't mm -hmm. work professionally with project management software can think of two or three, okay? The problem yeah. you have usually is like this, I think of this as mindshare, okay? Um, like mindshare for a certain topic, a term, a, 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 a theme, okay? Uh, for example, mm -hmm. in your case, AI assistance. The problem you have, there's already like a lot of stuff in here. Okay. Yeah. Um, which also means from the point of an investor, like how innovative is this? Okay. And also <clears throat> like if there's many things I can already compare to, and it's a very noisy market, is the innovation strong enough that you will actually be like one of those that like outlier? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. The usually there's like two ways around this. Like number one is just like execute, execute, execute. You know, mm -hmm. uh, number two is what people think of as niching, which I don't really like as a term is like trying to create like a specific separate, uh, box, you know, uh, oh, this is why you yeah. see stuff like, Hey, there is, um, Calendly, you know, and there is like hundreds mm -hmm. of, uh, other scheduling tools. And then people come up with, uh, open source Calendly, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. open source Calendly mean that those that you can like self-host, change the code, whatever. Like all of a sudden there's like a new box. And now it's about, yeah. it's like, hey, I have a new box, which is like open source uh, calendar software. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah. Cool. Like I don't know any other. And now the question is only, do I believe you that this box is interesting enough? Do I believe you that this box is like, has an opportunity, can be big enough and so on and so on. So quite frequently it's like, this is like essentially positioning, niching. I don't like the term niching because it could, the, the new box could be bigger than the other box, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Or can be yeah. completely unrelated. So um, regarding fundraising, the main feedback you will get is that this is very similar to a lot of other stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And mm -hmm. usually, and I, I guess you have seen this, um, you have seen, most likely experienced this as a developer, you program something, and then you see mm -hmm. exactly the same features in a completely different product that charges like 5x because they sell it to lawyers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they slightly mm -hmm. position it different. Like it's not like an upload form. It's like a, a secure data storage or something like that. But it's yeah. technically just an upload form, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's all about like in the end, a little bit about positioning. So, okay. All of that being said, um, to get into a power position, my suggestion is to see if you can like slightly create a new box, niche, topic, topic focus. Um, mm -hmm. which one, I don't know. That's something you know better than I, you know, that's like mm -hmm. you talk to your users, you know, and that could yeah. help you to stand a little bit out. And then, uh, it's like, you have like, it's a little bit easier to stand out here. are. Okay. That's number mm -hmm. one. Okay. Um, and then the second one in your specific case. Okay. Um, most early stage investors. Uh, don't just invest in um, the product. They invest, quote unquote, in a mm -hmm. team, you know? Okay. And yeah. um, especially what most uh, uh, VC funds are looking for is like outlier type investors, uh, founders. Nobody mm -hmm. really knows what that means, you know, but they have usually mm -hmm. like a little bit idiosyncratic genius archetype, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, in your case, you have a really interesting story because you're so young. So you realistically mm. could get into a lot of funds just because of the fact that they, they think, or like they know that you're very outlier.
because you're very mm -hmm. young, which is also interesting for them because it's a story they can tell to their investors, that it's a story that they can tell to press, all this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so realistically, there is a chance that you can raise uh, just because of the age and the fact that what you built so far mm -hmm. is like pretty much like awesome. You know, like I think the stuff Thank that you. you built so far can easily compare to other stuff I've seen. You know, I mean, obviously yeah. I, we didn't like dig into like all the edge cases, but like it's somewhere, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, yeah, thank you. So that's my thinking, okay? If you're looking for um, investment, what I would do is I would look for funds that are very, very comfortable with super early stage, okay? Um, yeah. My, um, we can go afterwards. I have to hurry a little bit to make sure I get like time for other folks as well. But like this would be a common mm -hmm. question, so I will list afterwards a few that I think could be useful, okay? My Great. other suggestion, personally, is... Um, make sure you actually want to fundraise, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you're 15, if you work on like yeah. one, two, three, four projects, and some of them work, you know what I mean? You have mm -hmm. a very high likelihood of building something that's pretty epic, that makes a lot of money and doesn't need to make any investor happy, and you can jump between projects that you think is useful, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I personally mm. think that Nobody, unless they absolutely know why, should get investment. Does this make any okay. sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, any questions before I uh, uh, ramble more? <laughs> I'm like radio, like you just turn me on, I just like keep talking. <laughs> um, I, no, I, don't, I, I, think, I think that's covered everything for me. Cool. Um, so uh, this is for the, the, the now 1,300 people, not 200 people watching. Um, wow. Go to beam.computer, okay? Try out uh, the app, okay? Um, if you... E, that's double E, by the way. Sorry, did, did I misspell it? No, B-E-E, -E, I've got that quite... So B-E-E-M, I've got that quite a few times. No, no, but like I have it in the stream, don't worry. Like it's, it's visible to everybody. Oh, great. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh, like everybody you. sees the correct URL. <laughs> Not worry about that. Yeah. Uh, got you covered, dude. Um, try out the app, okay? Uh, send Toby feedback. And uh, if you do early stage investing, uh, ping Toby, okay? Toby, if anybody pings you and you want like uh, somebody to coach you through this, like, like let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm not a good investor for Great. this, but I'm very happy to help you if you get like any offers, okay? Wonderful, thank you. Cool. Let's stop screen share for a second. Okay, Toby, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you got my uh, email. You got my everything. Like, uh, keep me in the mm -hmm. loop how this is going, okay? Wonderful. Thank you so much. Cool. Um, chat, say hi and bye to Toby. Um, and uh, see you later, mate. See you. Bye-bye. Okay. That was fun. Um, what are you thinking, guys? What are you thinking so far? Is this... What do you think of Beam? Like, is this something? Could this go somewhere? Like, I think it's crazy. Um, so give me one second just to get the next person in. Okay. Right? Um, uh, Toby's like extremely inspiring. I fully agree. Like this is um, um, like at 15 years old. um this is extremely inspiring so um yeah cool uh, what we do now is we get the next person on stage um and i hope toby's uh, joining for um this and like i'm trying to like add a few other ideas later on okay um and also guys if you have any feedback uh, and any ideas how you can help um let uh, uh let us know okay um ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. So, yeah, I have a little bit technical problems with the chat. And by the way, I'm trying to read the Twitter chat. Um, I, will, I will react to the Twitter chat. I, the, for technical reasons, they don't have an API, they don't have an iframe, nothing. Uh, I, I can only like uh, embed the Algora chat here. Um, cool. So, um, we jump now to the next one, um, which is Talisman. Okay. Uh, Chico already told me that he has to jump on time, like he has to leave on time. Um, and I kind of overtimed, um, so I'm very sorry for that, Chico. But let's get Chico in. Um, hey, Chico. 
Good. Hey, you are like live to 1,250 people. This is freaking insane. Um, That's crazy. Let me quickly switch the title here. Cool. So, no uh, Chico, tell me about you. Tell me about what you're doing. Uh, tell us about Talisman. Um, and also, like, before we get there, like, what do you want to get out of this call? Like, what would be useful for you? Yeah, so for myself, we're about to start the uh, the fundraising journey. Mm -hmm. um, so for the past, I would say we took like six months and then we just went back to focusing on product, mm -hmm. um, focusing on this latest release that we had because previously we had a beta. Um, so now the, the next step for us is raising some funding um, and we want to use that to be able to get to 30K MRR is mm -hmm. really the goal. Mm -hmm. Who's the funding for? Right now our team is super small. We have you know, effectively one and a half developers on the team mm -hmm. um, and then some contract resources. So we want to increase the team. But and when I say increase, it's really adding one or two people um, of headcount. Yeah. Are you one of the developers? Like, are you building? Uh, no. So I'm I'm on the product side. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm design and um, working on product. But no, our primary builder right now is our CTO, Dan. OK, cool, cool. Awesome. Um... What do you want to get? Like, so basically, you're starting fundraising and like just discuss this a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I know I sent over the deck, so get your thoughts on how you're feeling about the deck, how we should be positioning, and what you think of you know the story that we have outlined in the deck, um, and basically the overall story that we're going to be telling while fund fundraising. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, do you want to go through the actual deck, or do you, what, what? What's the idea? Yeah. Uh, let me. I know you have it. Um, do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, yeah, that's easier. Okay, let me pull it up. And I know you have like a hard cut at like uh, um, zero, right? Like in 80 minutes. Uh, yeah, I can go until like uh five minutes or ten minutes after mm -hmm. cool, cool. um because I, i was able to hold that call a couple of minutes so okay awesome it up. so uh chico has directly afterwards an investor call uh no pressure folks so if you have feedback for him <laughs> he will directly afterwards use it <laughs> no pressure at all okay absolutely um okay cool so i can give you a little bit of background on myself and then jump into here mm -hmm. um that way that so so by the way um, uh the, the idea here is not pitching the idea is feedback for the pitch deck okay so everybody just like context okay cool you go yeah so uh, a little background about me and the team so um for myself started in tech as a project manager um moved into sales and revenue roles um to learn that side of the business and then moved back into product at a product consultancy where we built uh zero to one early stage products for um, other startups, basically. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The goal for me was always to make myself well-rounded, so understand how to build things, understand how to sell them, um, mm -hmm. so I could start my own company one day. Um, the idea for Talisman came from uh, my last company that I was in a revenue role. I was uh, director of sales, and I we were starting to hire quite a bit, and the problem that we always ran into was getting new hires set up in the different systems that we needed them set up into so that they could get off and running. And the problem was the company had, had, you know, different people sit in my seat, sit in other seats. So it was really, nobody was keeping track of, you know, what tools did we have? Who was the different admins for all these tools and what was going on with that? Mm -hmm. So my CEO sent me out to kind of solve this problem with software was the initial thought. Um, and what we found was there were different tools that you could use. So for like the spend piece, there were tools out there, but a lot of them were marketed toward mid-market. And the entry point for some of these tools was higher than we had an appetite for. Um, at the time, this is like two, three years ago, it was like a minimum of like 15K um, for some of these spend analysis tools. And then you also would then need to get like an Okta or um, some other access management tool to then manage the access pieces. Um, and then to even use Okta, you need to have a uh, single sign-on licenses uh, or a single sign-on capable licenses. So we would then have had to upgrade all of the tools that we were using to be single sign-on licenses. Um, so the whole entire thing was going to end up being really expensive to be able to automate this process for a company at the time that had 60 people. So um, that kind of stood out to me as like a really weird problem 
Um, and we ended up hiring like an IT guy to come in and actually handle this because it was cheaper to do that. So our CEO brought in like a IT guy who was getting paid like 60K a year. And the first thing that he did was reconcile all of our tools. And he found $100,000 in tools that have been purchased by engineering, marketing and sales over the past you know five or six years that we were still paying for that were no longer being used. Um, and that kind of made the problem kind of stand out in my eyes. I'd already noticed this as a problem, but then when I saw that and I was like, yeah, we really struggled to solve this problem. So that's when me and the team started working on this um, effectively. And then uh, we did a beta release and then we released uh, on Product Hunt February 29th. So uh, about 30 days ago, um, we were we got second for product of the day and first for SaaS of the product um, of the month with the release. And the first release is really just focused on um, the spend management aspects. So helping companies for free manage their SaaS stack um, from a from a cost perspective. Um, so cool. I can go into more detail in, in the deck itself. Oh, shoot. I can't hear you. Is that? No. Do you hear me now? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you're back. Okay, cool, cool. Sorry for that. Um, completely asshole question in between. After the IT guy got you $100,000 in saving, did you give him a bonus or her? No. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ice cold. <laughs> Justice for no, no. IT guy, dude. <laughs> no, IT guy got uh, got no bonus. Um, it, it was funny because I remember talking to him and I was like, wait, Josh, this is like really big, you know? And he's like, it's pretty common because um, he'd come from healthcare, actually. And he told me this is his typical. He comes into a company and it's the first thing that he does. And inevitably, he always finds something. Okay, makes sense. Um, especially a company older than five years. Okay, cool. So um, you said you want to like go through the deck and get a bit of feedback. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. And by the way, folks, um, if you have feedback on the deck, uh, like throw it into the chat. Okay. I don't know not much about SaaS. Okay. I don't know much about procurement or spend or revenue, fintech or anything like that. Okay. So throw in. Um, yeah, maybe like maybe it can be useful. Okay, let's go. Cool. Cool. So. Um, yeah, the, the way that we've been thinking about what we've been trying to build for the past two years is we're thinking of it as a system of record and action for SaaS. Mm -hmm. um, so the piece is, you know, what do you have? Uh, not only that, but what are you spending um, and who's mm -hmm. using it? And mm -hmm. then the action would be, I can add and remove users, um, right? Which is that that SSO piece. So um, the, the trends that we're seeing on this is, you know, this one's pretty obvious, like SaaS is growing. Um, but when you really look at how companies are managing and kind of using these different apps, it hasn't changed dramatically, even though they're using more apps than ever, right? Because mm -hmm. basically most most businesses are running off of SaaS. And one of the the issues is a singular system of like record and, and action doesn't really exist, especially for SMB and mid-market. Mm -hmm. um, things are kind of silos, right? So there's the evaluation step, which for me, when I was, you know, leading that revenue team, I was taking a look at like G2 crowd um, and tools like that to figure out what tool we should be buying. For example, I was tasked with finding a new CRM and that ended up being like a six to seven week process um, because I had to figure out like, what are our requirements? You know, what tools are going to play well with our existing marketing stack, that kind of thing. Um, and then once we actually purchased the tool, then uh, we have to figure out if we're going to pay for uh, SSO level licenses so we can use a tool like Okta, or do we end up just using like a, a one password or something like that? And then the actual purchasing itself, there are tools for that. But for us, we didn't even use one. We just more uh, directly worked with, with the vendor itself. But right now, these are really three different product classes. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you, um, uh, by the way, um, we've been doing a little bit too much of a pitch and too little of pitch feedback, okay? Oh, yeah. uh, because people hear like pitches like everywhere, you know, and, and, uh, and I think also for you, because you have like a investor call in like 10 minutes, uh, yeah. like, let's make sure this is useful for you. For me to understand uh, very quickly, okay, uh, do I get this right that your app doesn't need SSO and you directly log in into the different SaaS tools um, and through that, like basically you have like, I assume like some uh, headless browser, you log in through like the headless browser, you get the information through that. Is this correct? That's correct. Okay, Spot awesome. On. Do you also do anything around procurement? So like somebody needs like a new tool, can ask internally, get like the information? That's the goal. Okay. So, so that's like where we're trying to go is once we have 
So one of the things that we'll understand is what your stack is currently, mm -hmm. and then we'll use that as a jump off point. So you can ask questions like, hey, we're trying to get this tool to do this. And then we'll be able to analyze like, okay, these are the different tools that are out there. Here's all the different tools in your stack. And mm -hmm. then here's what those tools already integrate with. But that's more like in future, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, let's, let, let's jump through it back and like, let's look where you have like currently like uncertainty. Uh, cool. So one of the, the key things, honestly, I think it's the, the three slides that follow, like basically this, like, here's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Here's some context about the problem, some background, and then here's the solution that we're proposing. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of have like two solution slides. Um, and then we have like, th that's the part I think is the most shaky in mm -hmm. the, in the deck. Cause every, I feel like it's more your straightforward deck really. Yep. Right. It's like, once you're past that, it's really like, what's the market size? What's who's the team, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But it's really this sequence here. Mm -hmm. Um, I think is like where the most feedback would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. Like how to make it easier to understand. So this is me speaking as somebody who doesn't know much about SaaS. Okay, um, especially like SaaS procurement, I have no freaking idea. Um, so, you know, you do whatever you think is right. If you end up successful, you are right. Okay, uh, everything else is just noise and random, uh, I don't know, streams, <laughs> um, giving you like some input. Um, when I look at like uh, products, the number one thing I'm trying to figure out is like, how is this different? If I invest, in the very first round, and like I do this frequently, I do like first check investments, which is like plain stupid to do. Like I don't recommend any investor to be the first investor. It's like a stupid idea. Uh, right. Way more work, way more work, <laughs> way more risk. Don't do that. Anyway, uh, I do that. Um, when like the main the main thing I'm trying to figure out is like how is this actually different? Because mm -hmm. I need. Uh, I discussed this with Toby before. Um, can I quickly jump to the screen uh, to my screen share? If this is okay for you? Yeah. Um, Go for it. So let's quickly jump to this screen share again. Um, I will screen share this also in Zoom so that you see it without the screen. Uh, that um, there we go. So um, so I don't know if you've seen this part before, but basically uh, like a three D space, okay? Like execution, innovation, credentials, mm -hmm. okay? If you're strong on two, you can you can raise a comfortable route, like you can raise from a power position. And, and as you know, like racing is like different if you're like somebody everybody wants to invest in versus something, you know, <laughs> like, right. like you, you know, you know what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yep. Um, so the main thing that I'm trying to figure out is because I believe that early on, it's really, really hard to get mindshare, like attention from the users. And I hope that in the beginning, your product might be not really good but it does something uniquely really well, okay? Um, I, at least I, I invest very product centric, okay? And I have always like this idea that hopefully the product is unique enough that even if you fuck up, sorry, <clears throat> even if you are doing mistakes every little day, the market pool right. can still get you at least far enough that you have a chance to succeed, okay? There's nothing worse than building like a really, really complex product and everybody is like looking at it is like, yeah, it's basically like the other thing, you know, and ends up recommending the other things to their friend. You know what I mean? So the, the main trick that I found for launching products and early stage product in general is like positioning, like same tag, slightly different position. The one thing that I would try in the beginning, because the space that you're pitching is really noisy, like SaaS management, cost management, procurement, this is a noisy space, you know. And it, it still gets funding. It's not like a space that's like, I would say done, but it's a very noisy space. So what I would try in the very beginning is like the two, three things that make you very different, just like show them directly if you can. You know what I mean? Let's jump in here. Like what are the two, three things that make you very different? Yeah, I think it's the the read write approach with, with um, kind of what you alluded to, like how we're going to pull in data and then also make actions. Because right now, Precisely. You just, yeah, I think that's the, the biggest key. Mm -hmm. Um, cause right now for, for companies, their main option is like, you do have to go pay for those more expensive licenses. Yeah. It's horrible. Um, to be able to, yeah, it, which it, doesn't, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's never like SAS basically is like, uh, very, very affordable, very affordable, very affordable. Uh, now you need SSO. Okay. Now it costs like 
like <clears throat> an F ton. You know what I mean? Uh, like SSO is like a tax, you know, like it shouldn't be. Mm. Yeah, people don't don't know that. There's actually a website called SSO.tax that you can go to that'll show you. Um, oh, perfect. Uh, a wall of shame. Yeah, it's uh, the wall of shame. And it, it's actually ridiculous. So when we go talk to companies, so when we were in the research phase, companies were like, we are ready to throw money at you if you can solve this problem for us. Because like, as you can imagine, for each tool, we'd be saving them like a ridiculous amount of money um, that they're spending on just fees alone. Because it's yeah. one thing to have access to the tool, but the fees just make it insane. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's not jump into if SSO makes sense or not. Like there is arguments for its security and so on and so on. Like it should be actually something people don't charge extra for. But the main advantage right. that you have is like if I'm an SMB and I have like a smaller startup and I have like dozens of like tools, I can use you, log in and all of a sudden like still see the stuff. Okay, cool. That's, that's difference number one. It's another difference. Uh, the the other um, differentiator that we have is we're combining um, the, the three kind of core things from a SaaS flows uh, perspective, like the ability to evaluate um, what it is that you want and then the ability to manage it once you purchase it. What um, does this mean? What the, does this mean? Uh, so managing is like add and remove users, mm -hmm. um, see like who's who's using it, um, all of that data in in the same place that you can add and remove them. So okay. with Okta, I can I can see what who my users are um, if I have that enough paid for SSO, but I can't attribute cost mm -hmm. as I'm doing that too. So okay. On our tool, like effectively, like if I'm adding somebody, I also see exactly how much I just spent. Mm -hmm. or how much I just saved by taking X action, all in like one view. Um, okay, and this sense. is a, a, yeah. Okay, this makes sense. Um, how many of your competitors are already doing this? Uh, like number one and two. For, for number one, there's one uh, that just announced that they will start to do it mm -hmm. um, in the coming months, mm -hmm. where they said like in the next few quarters. Um, but no, the, basically one has talked about doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, no, none are currently doing it. Okay. And then for number two, mm -hmm. um, the way that they do this is through integrations. So mm -hmm. basically you would buy a spend platform and then the spend platform has an Okta integration. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of how they would mm -hmm. do that piece. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not like it's, you, you have, you would have to have an integration with a, with an SSO provider to, to do number two right now okay makes sense. so none of them have so um i cannot tell you if what you're saying is true correct <laughs> there might be like 80 tools that like you just forgot about i have no idea this is not my space okay well i'm talking big competitors um i, I don't know if there's like some startup i've never heard of that yeah. um in those waters but of the main like i would consider them like five or six main competitors that people would know in our space mm -hmm. that's who i'm referencing okay cool um, assume that investors have like a lot of market transparency. Investors that invest in that space have market transparency. You know, ask them also if they know this kind of if they know any company that's like different, like like this basically. You know, um, because they know that space. Uh, they have like a lot of market. Like the, the biggest advantage that investors have over founders is like the market transparency. They have most likely seen an investment like a, a, a company like you like a week before. You know, what I mean, um, so like try to get those names even if they're small because. You are currently like on investment side, you're not competing with the big dogs. You're competing with somebody who is like doing something similar you might know about, and that's also currently racing. Okay, that's on the, on the racing side. Right. Number two, when it comes to actually uh, your pitch deck, um, if this is your edge, like if this is the thing that makes you different, I would personally uh, make sure that every investor goes out of this and remembers that. Okay? Right. Like that should be clear. and. Um, one thing you so like this is number one um and an, an important um or like a way to think about this is uh i assume you know the concept of like an uh, um, elevator pitch right right okay the actual elevator pitch is not between a founder and an investor the actual elevator pitch is between an investor and another investor usually like the associate that you talk to you know and the partner in the office, they afterwards tell, how was the meeting, what were they doing, or maybe like on their weekly report, they go through the list. They need to be able to summarize you in a way that gets this involved, okay? Right. Um, the whole job of the pitch deck is two things. Number one, they should be able 
to uh, um, uh, um, explain this? You know, they should come out of this and be able to say this. You know, they should be able to say what's different with you, especially if it's a noisy space. Okay. And number two, your job is to make sure they look good. Okay. You want to give them things where you are the first, the best, the only. You know what I mean? You want to explain them why this is huge so that when they, like imagine you're like a VC associate, you talk to like 80 right. companies in a week and then you need to look good in front of your partner because sooner or later you want like to have more investment power or whatever. How do you look good? By like telling them about exciting stuff. Like you want to tell the partner like really, really cool companies, you know? So make sure not only that they get it, but also that they have the tools like to explain why this is awesome. Why are you awesome? You know what I mean? So that they go out of this meeting and are able to say, hey, I just talked to an amazing company, A, B, and C, and this is why they're different, and this is, could be because of A, B, and C. You know what I mean? Does it make sense? No, it, it makes sense. Uh, and Techstars, uh, Andrew Spareto, he was our MD, he mm -hmm. told me we were having drinks, and he, the way that he put it, he actually said the exact same thing you just said. He said, give me something I can brag about at a party. Nice. Um, he, he was like, yeah, you know, as a, as a VC, like, something I can talk about and get people excited about. So yeah, yeah, spot on. So I'm not saying he stole this from me, okay? I'm not saying this, but I'm also not, not saying it, okay? <laughs> um, sweet, uh, you have your call with the investor right now, is my understanding. Uh, any last yeah, questions? Yeah, uh, or like, how can people like help you? Like, um, what, what would be useful for you? Yeah, um, one, all feedback is always welcome. I mm -hmm. think we're, we're like, obviously at the stage as a building, so, um, we're always looking for people, one, to use the product, give us feedback, like, what do we suck at? What do you want to see? Um, how is it working for you? And then also on this deck, if you have feedback, um, my email is chico at getalisman.com. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can find me on Twitter at Chico Chingaya and Chico, C-H-I-K-O. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so email is always best, but all feedback is welcome. That would be the most helpful. And then um, if you are watching this and an investor, let's chat. Um, and you can give us some feedback on, on our pitch as well. Awesome. Quit. Um, the, the URL is in the stream, getthalisman.com. Uh, Chico, it was awesome to have you. Uh, keep us in the loop, like how things are going. Good luck with your fundraise. And uh, right now we're in a recession. So um, pitching something that helps companies save money is very topical. So I think you have a chance to raise personally, even if it's like a noisy market. So like, I think if you manage to make this one, like how is this innovative, really good. Right. And then get like people who have SaaS purchasing competence involved. You know, I think you can raise on these two. Yeah, we've got, we're raising um, 500K. We've got 150K committed mm -hmm. um, like going into the, the fundraise. Um, so we, we feel pretty good about it. Like you said, it feels very topical. So we'll definitely keep you posted on it. Sweet. Um, for SEC regulation, uh, I have to just verify to everybody, this is not investment advice. Okay. Uh, but if you want to help him or reach out to him, go for Chico at, tal at talisman.com. Chico, it was awesome to meet you. Andres, appreciate the opportunity and the advice. Thank you. Sweet. Um, so um, let's do like a five minutes break and check in. Um, I will quickly try to see if I can fix the chat. Um, guys, like, what's your POV? Like, is this useful? Uh, is this going somewhere? What do you think of the company so far? Uh, yeah, like, 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 hit me with your information, hit me with your thoughts. Okay, and this is working out, this is on the call. Uh, I think this works better. Okay. Okay, I'm making the, the thing a bit bigger. Um, okay, how, one second. How do you think uh, VCs feel about founder asking you about competitors in a pitch meeting, as you just said? Does it show you being aware of what you do? do or... No, that's fine. Um, so uh, the, the question is basically, um, is it weird to ask VCs questions? Uh, the answer is no. They are experts. Um, I mean, that's not true. <laughs> Some of them are experts. Um, and especially they have a market transparency. Like imagine you talk to 80 com SaaS companies in a week, you know, or 80 FinTech companies in a week. You have seen everything, you know what I mean? 
they have market transparency and they also like to brag. Like my number one feedback is always like, let uh, investors talk more than you do in those calls because they, they love the voice of the, they love the sound of their voice. You know what I mean? Like I got like a fancy microphone because I love my, the sound of my voice so much. You know what I mean? Um, they love talking. Uh, so like let them talk. And if you have questions, ask them questions. In the end, you are not, this is like not a, like a bazaar. Like you're not going and selling something. You know what I mean? You are early stage. You obviously have a lot of things that are not clear. There's a lot of like essentially bets that you're just taking. And you're looking for the right partners here, you know, like start using them from the very first second, ask them for advice, ask them for feedback, ask them for potential competitors, ask them for introductions, you know, be a dick about it. That's completely okay. You know, uh, it's their job to make a good impression in front of you anyway. So, yeah. So it's, uh, so thanks for the question. It's a good question, actually. Uh, it's, it doesn't show that you're, you, you are incompetent or that you don't have the knowledge. You, you're not supposed to know everything. You know what I mean? Like you are a founder focusing on your thing, your head's down. You're trying to make market research, but of course you can't know everything. Okay? How should you? Okay? Um, sweet. Um, we will go now and get in the next person. But before I do this, or actually, uh, let's do that commercial break after uh, the next one. Okay? Um, so the next one we have and I hope this is correct because I rescheduled everything a few times now. Um, oops, does this work? The next one we have is Edity. Um, I hope this is correct. I, I really, really hope. Um, yeah. Um, sweet. Um, yeah, uh, um, uh, Hazen, uh, the, the, the feedback regarding the delay, I, I fully agree. Um, let's pitch uh, to Ionis, uh, the guys who run uh, Algora. Uh, there's a delay. Uh, there's currently nothing I can do about it, but we'll figure it out. Okay, like this is a this is a trial run. This is a better run. Okay, so um, let me quickly. Coolio. Sweet. I'm getting. Uh, um, the next one on, uh, Dimitro. Um, perfect. Let me quickly. Sorry, I'm like, I have so many windows that okay. show faces. I'm getting like really confused. Okay. Hey, Dimitro. No problem. Um, hey, hey, Andres. Cool. Thanks for joining. Um, Thanks for letting me in last minute. Yeah, yeah no worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, so, first up, no pressure. It's 1,900 people watching. Nice. I yep. love the pressure. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly believe the numbers on Twitter are cooked. Okay, I think well, that Elon will agree with you. Yes, I think Elon does everything <laughs> to make make the Twitter look good, but like maybe not. Who knows? You know, this is startups. Like everything is anyway uh, just smoke and mirrors. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> That's um, true. But you know, we should exploit it still. Like you know, we can brag about that, right? Almost like two K, maybe sometimes even more. So why not? Yeah, exactly. Cool, um, Dimitro. Um, what would be useful for you? Like, what do you want to get out of this? Um, we have like roughly 20 minutes. Uh, what would be, I don't know, what would be good use of your time? Sure. So first of all, definitely, I would like to present what we're working on with mm -hmm. edit.ai mm -hmm. and uh, sign up some uh, people, you know, to try out uh, what we're doing. We're doing nice. uh, AI based video editing. So like, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool, uh, it's a pretty cool niche and uh, we're looking forward to I get more customers on board. We basically uh, uh, started like a two weeks ago on more of a public, uh, you know, domain. So uh, right now everything is going well and good, and we're looking forward to get more of use cases. Okay. So now it's like testimonials are pretty pretty popular. Uh, webinars, you know, we're turning them into highlights, uh, events. Oh, uh, you're, you're jumping! Some, you're but... jumping too far. Like nobody has an idea what you're doing. Uh, yeah, share your screen. Really share your screen. <laughs> share your screen and show us what you're doing. Um, by the sure. way, how many folks are you right now? Uh, it's just uh, two of us nice. and uh, a couple of people that helping us uh, with uh, overseeing the quality of the videos. Mm -hmm. So basically, what we're doing first of all, right? Uh, we're building an AI uh, agent that edits raw videos 
uh, for customers based on a single prompt. So you are given the style in, you know, your, your, what you want to, what, what the output you want from the video, just as a plain text, just a plain comment, and uh, we'll take care of everything else. And mm -hmm. this is the whole idea, uh, how we're doing it. Definitely right now, we're overseeing the whole process to make sure that the quality is highest possible. And we're making edits uh, at some places where we can see that the uh, inside tool is, is hallucinating, but uh, it still works awesome and saves ton of time. I mean, first of all, you know, it, it was uh, like at least eight hours to edit some videos. Now mm -hmm. for you, it's just like a couple of minutes to give us a prompt mm -hmm. and that's all. And um, just a short note about the team, uh, my co-founder, Andrew, Lisa, she is a YouTuber and she is a pretty famous YouTuber in, in, in Ukraine, to be honest, one mm -hmm. of the biggest in the design, UX, UI design space. And so we have that first um, hand product knowledge and kind of, you know, uh, that insight from the whole process, how editing is looking like, what really audience want to get from the creator and all that stuff. So it really, mm -hmm. really helps us a lot. And just for the and, record, um, uh, you are current yeah. in Can Canada, but you're where are you from? Yes. Yeah, we're originally we're from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We've spent a lot of time in Poland because mm -hmm. like we moved uh, out of Ukraine as a teenagers, you know, a long time ago. Uh, and uh, we moved to Canada a year ago. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you moved because of the war or yeah. you moved like uh, before the war? Uh, we moved. So like we moved. To Poland, it was before like even 2014. So it was, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, Easy. it was just basically an opportunity to go somewhere. You know, I was 17 years old, so it was just nice, like nice, a no brainer nice. to go nice. somewhere else. Cool. Awesome. And so, yeah, afterwards, yeah, the Canada is more about like the startup ecosystem and more of the opportunities. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, can you show us the product or is it like, is it working? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So basically, you know, right away you can sign up. I'll show you from my perspective because, uh, yeah, I have an account, definitely. Uh, how it works for now. So you're just basically signing up for it. Uh, you're going with, we, we have uh, one time uh, video editing before like the subscription plan just for you to try it out to make sure that everything is, you know, working great and the video quality is high as possible. And it's heavily discounted. So it saves a ton of money and time for you. After that, uh, you know, the video that we already have uh, edited for you, you have an option to approve it or to correct it after the reviewing. So like, you know, uh, the video that is already done, let me show you some example of how it's going to look like. I'm pretty sure you don't hear like the, the audio, but like the quality of the video, you can see right away mm -hmm. you know, how the output will look like. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was mentioning before, the highlights are like from the webinars, the um, you know the the long form videos like the video podcasts and stuff that mm -hmm. you can uh, use on the platforms like LinkedIn and YouTube and get some attraction right away out of it mm -hmm. and then we can also reuse it for short uh, form videos like three four short form videos from one long form for the shorts reels TikTok I mean you know the video is now is is a king. In okay. the content, right? Okay, you can got get it. More engagement. So to, to to repeat, uh, I basically gi uh, uh, give you a video, I give you a prompt, and you cut me short clips. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. How, how does this technically work? Like, what are you using in the background? Like, how do you actually? Like, how does this? Like, what is the magic? Yeah. So basically, like for now, we have the dashboard, and you're uploading like the whole video for us, specifying the prompt and all that stuff, and it's not yet self serve. So mm -hmm. we're making sure it's a good quality. So that's why we need to know we're seeing this. But on the on the back end, let's let's say on our end, we have that uh, pre-built AI based tools that are cutting the videos, cutting the silence, cutting the bad takes, and improving that. So basically, how it works, it transcribes what you are talking uh, during the video mm -hmm. uh, into the text. You know, comparing with the timestamps mm -hmm. and based on the context, what is going on. Uh, it makes those cuts and all of that stuff. Plus, we have some, you know, more stuff like for the how, how can how can I imagine this? Like, uh, basically, I have like timestamps, and you use FFmpeg to cut the video down and then do some like recutting. Is this how I can imagine this? Yeah, yeah, pretty much that. Pretty much that. Nice. And uh, again, we also like you know uh, 
we are type of the founders that uh, would like to see the MRR, would like to have like default the life Jesus. and all of that. Money? So we, you like revenue? Yeah. Oh, yeah, whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry, guys. Sorry, revenue. sorry, sorry. I have to kick this one. I didn't notice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> hey, dude, we, we don't we don't use the R word here. What, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, well, you know. We still can raise tons of money, right? We still can raise more than. Uh, yeah, yeah, get rich. Need. Like so honestly, okay. like, I, okay. I uh, <laughs> honestly, the best way to raise money is making a lot of money. You know what I mean? Uh, cool. This is our approach. Okay, cool. So uh, technically, how this works is I upload a video. Um, I tell you what you want. You use an LLM to yeah. roughly understand what the person is trying to articulate. You you yeah. you throw this against the prompt. The prompt has uh, sorry the, the the transcript. The transcript has timestamps. With the timestamps, you connect it to FFmpeg, and then you basically use FFmpeg and like a lot of other magic and trial and error to recut it. Is this uh, plus some additional tools for like you know some small things like color correction, yeah. some overlays mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But it's more about like details. But mm -hmm. you yeah, roughly. That's 100%, cool. Right. That's cool. And, what, uh, what is the so like the, the current use case is like webinars. I could imagine this to be very popular for gaming streamers and all this kind of stuff. Do you do stuff like um, do you scan the videos for like special moments like activity or something like that right now? That's what we're working on right now. Okay. Because you know, it requires more of a multi-model type of approach to understand mm -hmm. like what is going on on the video. But we're working on it currently and and you know working hard. But but still, you know, we want to sell. We want to see the real use cases, and we want to test out our ICP profiles awesome. and stuff. And I'm not sure about the gamers, but we're mainly focused now on the businesses. Makes sense. So they basically, have more money. all of the businesses want to, yeah, and want to have like you know that uh, uh, effect from the videos, right? They're not doing much of the content. Their content, if you know, if they will produce a good educational content, they will have like good leads. They will start inbound finally, and it's a pretty low effort just by having like you know the the iPhone and and the good content right so just sit and talk and we'll do the rest mm -hmm. yeah this makes sense um, what would be useful for you for this call like you wanted to show the product awesome what would, yeah. how can people in the the two thousand one hundred people watching right now how can they help you nice yeah so uh, if you're interested schedule a demo we have the on the website there is a button schedule a demo we can talk about your use case if we can help you sign up try the video try to upload it and get the the edited video by us we'll be happy and if you want to chat or something i'm 100 percent open for it i love chatting about the startups and i will have a question for you actually mm -hmm. andres because yep, you'll, you'll definitely have a nice nice view on that uh what are we um currently like worried about is that you know we're like european founders and all that stuff jesus like, hate you know, those immigrants and, and and everything so like we don't have those fancy titles like, you know, ex fangs or like Stanford grads and all that stuff. And we're kind of a little bit worried about like uh, raising a seed round because we had a pre seed now and uh, from from like that perspective. And we were thinking about getting into like accelerator to make us more legit for mm -hmm. the local like ecosystem. And what do you think about that? Is that a good approach? Is that not right? Should okay, like, okay, okay. Know, just kind of mm -hmm. let's break this down. Uh, number one, uh, did you raise any money so far? Yeah. How much did you raise? 125k. Okay, and there was like angels, friends, or what was this? Yeah, angels, angels, amazing angels. Exit founders. We have a bi-weekly calls. They're helping us a lot. And actually, they sent a link to your like uh, Twitter post because I was, as you mentioned, had Zine working on the outreach and getting clients. And they're like, you should reach out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, good. <laughs> Already, that, that's what we call value at. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you, you have raised a little bit of money and you're thinking now, like, are you actively thinking about raising more money? Yes or no? Or is it more like if the opportunity is there? Yes. Uh, we're thinking, yeah, opportunity, but like, I'll, I'll explain you why. Because uh, again, that thought of not be, not us not being legit in that market, you know, uh, kind of forces me to more focus on the MRR and growing like the metrics. Mm -hmm. And we have the clients, so we're like, you know, extremely focused on that. But uh, at the same time, I can feel the pressure that, you know, I would like a couple more people uh, on a team to mm -hmm. work on a tech more because like, you know, we can't like clone ourselves. I can yeah. work on a tech and sell and everything. Yeah. So this is kind of an ongoing question. Yeah, makes sense. Let me quickly tell Mike to wait a second. Um, I'm in the wrong window. Um, 
Okay, cool. So uh, number one, uh, your, your, your first question, uh, accelerators, okay? My personal opinion on accelerators is you either go with the best one or you go with none, okay? Uh -huh. um, the best one is uh, industry dependent, okay? So for example, there's a few, there's like a few accelerators specializing on certain things. So for example, for space tech, there's like Techstar Space, which is very good, you know? Uh, there's some, a few for healthcare and a few others, you know? And there's a few, uh, um, and so on and so on. In most other cases, it's YC. So if you consider an accelerator, go for YC. It's my opinion, okay? Uh, I'm saying this as a good friend of a lot of other accelerators and somebody who ran an accelerator, you know? Um, my personal opinion is the accelerator itself uh, doesn't make the credibility for you. The credibility comes out of the fact that people are involved that have a, like, they're legit for what you're doing, okay? So, um, one second. Uh, I'm losing overview. I will, can I, I will quickly screen share if this is okay with you, okay? And we do the sure, same we definitely. did before. I will also screen share for you so you see what I'm doing. Nice. So, okay, cool. Um, so, what I would do is if, if it would be you, okay? Um, the main mistake that a lot of people do is when they want to raise money. And you raised 150K, but I will still pretend... 25. Sorry, 25? 125. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, didn't, 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 didn't mean to make you look like it, baller and, it's, and, and it's, rich here, okay? <laughs> It's a big, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah I get it. I, dude, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, you're like already seeing like the tax authority behind you, like you're sweating. <laughs> um, so I will just pretend this is still like you raising for a pre-seed because what you did basically is like friends and family. Like my number one advice is basically always like call it smaller than it is. You know, like it's better to have like an awesome pre-seed, you know, than a weak seed. Okay, let me quickly zoom in uh -huh. here. This is too small. Uh, like, so always call it a little bit. Like, it's better to call this round like a pre-seed, you know, uh -huh. than a like a seed round that's like a week. You know what I mean? I think this is very obvious. Makes sense. Um, the yeah, way you want to yeah, approach a pre-seed, in my personal opinion, and like you do whatever you want afterwards. Okay, is create four boxes. Okay. Uh -huh. Deconstruct what you're doing. Like, tell me the four things that make your business. What are they? Four things that make my business. Your, your business, okay. your product, yeah. Uh, like from from perspective, like clients, uh, it's like a little bit. I, I will start. You know. Okay, I will start. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, say yeah, let, let's say something <laughs> like uh, video uh, video editing is like one, obviously. You know, maybe yeah. another one okay. is like creators, webinar uh, hosts. You know, like uh, etc. Like these kind of people. You know. Uh mm -hmm. Um. What else is like uh, for your thing? Maybe it's like um, AI tools, you know, or AI uh, yeah. AI engineering, you know. Maybe yeah. it's like multimodal. Um, yeah, multimodal. You know, yeah. maybe it's like AI, uh, um, like like you know, on the like on the edge of the technology, like like exploration, like somebody who you know, like this kind of stuff. What else? Uh, what else could be something that you do? How do you sell your product right now? Like, what's the main distribution channel? Yeah, definitely. It's an outreach and, uh, you know, those kind of events that I participate in, like that one. And so definitely, definitely outreach. So, I mean, it's an uh, outbound, okay. more outbound? space for now. Okay. So, outbound marketing, outbound. And maybe it's also like demand gen and maybe, and I think it will yep. be SEO very soon, you know, and in general, like yep. growth hacks and so on and so on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, my personal opinion is write a list where you have the number one people worldwide, ideally, you know, um, mm -hmm. and like those who are not worldwide number one, at least have them from be from Canada. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Create a list where you have, you know, these four and like just literally name the people. Ideally, those mm -hmm. are the founders of X, you know, it's creators, like in this case, it's like creators, people who run very successful webinars on large scale, you know, like potential customers. Yeah. Um, in this case, it could be somebody who, like, if you get like the, I don't know, the founder of Adobe Premiere or something, which is like 
doesn't really make sense in your case, but like something like that, you know, <laughs> who would be the best people for like video editing or content production in general, like all this kind of stuff, who would be the best people who have experience with creators, who are creators webinars, who are the best people who build like really, really freaky new stuff on uh, AI. It doesn't need to be open AI folks. This can be hackers yeah. who use like those APIs really smart, you know? And number yeah. four is like, who are the people, like the number one people around your thing, essentially, you know, like for your kind uh -huh. of product, um, who are really, really good with marketing. And like they're known for that. Ideally, they built the tools for that. Uh -huh. Like somebody who builds like dimension tools or SEO tools or like a really, really experienced. Those, like want, you want like to create these lists, you know, like just like imagine these are like four people lists, you know, uh -huh. and these are the people you want to reach out to. Okay. The reason uh -huh. here is like, um, number one, they don't get pitches all the time. They're not uh -huh. like flooded, like a typical. So you're like, yep. what, what you're saying is that like to approach them as an angels or like approach them more as the clients. Approach them as potential, potential customers. Pot approach them as potential experts. Let's start there. Potential experts. Okay. Get feedback, mm -hmm. work with them, mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. Nice. Show them something that's cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. hey, talk to them. And if you have a really good relationship, talk to them and be like, hey, mm -hmm. um, we are thinking of doing like a fundraise soon. We are thinking of doing a small advisory round beforehand with uh -huh. a few people who really helped us so far. Do you want to join? Okay. Um, this, this is for two reasons. Number one, uh, three reasons actually. Number one, they can actually help you. They're useful. Uh -huh. Like even if they don't invest, those calls are worth something and they can introduce you to the right other people in that space and in that space. Like they know the right people. Uh, and yeah. they know the right people without being competitive to you. You know, uh -huh. they don't need to, yeah. like each of these four, Together is what you do. Individually, they're non-competitive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you yeah, can get like the as expert. You can be very honest with them. You can be very open. You get like, all the advice. You get the network. That's amazing. That's number one. Yeah. So even if yeah. they don't invest, okay. Number two, uh -huh. if they invest, and I don't know if you have watched that part before. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was from the beginning. Steve <laughs> built a better tool. Sorry, the guy who runs runs here. The art draw is called Steve. I, I love here draw. By the way, um, they also. Uh, give you credibility. Okay. Uh -huh. Like ima imagine okay. you approach an investor and be like, hey, we're building this AI uh, video editing tool. And this person uh -huh. is like, who should I ask about this? I, I know a really famous like person who built like video editing. Like I know the founder of uh, Adobe Premiere, you know? Uh -huh. Oh, wait a minute. That guy's already investing. Holy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. That's the best case yeah. scenario. So these people give you the credibility that proves that the innovation that you have is actually interesting. Okay. That, that's interesting. Okay. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. 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 And yeah, that's, that's that, like a new, you know, angle on the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and the way to think about this is um, think of um, the job of an investor as like bets. Okay. So there is like big bets, like core bets, you know, there is uh -huh. like side bets, you know, so uh -huh. there's like multiple bets, like there's bets that are always involved. Like, is it the right team, the right timing, blah, blah, blah. And then there's like specific to this product, like, um, can they actually do like, is this technology A, B and C and D, yeah. you know, is this actually uh -huh. unique enough? Is this something that creators actually want and so on and so on, you know, a typical investor that's doesn't have a background in video editing tool cannot, uh -huh. doesn't fucking know, no idea. They will have to ask somebody. <laughs> But if you have already like some of the best creators involved, some of the best video editing uh -huh. founders and all this kind of stuff, you know, they can say, uh -huh. okay, this bet somebody already subscribed to, this bet already subscribed to, this bet already subscribed to. I will do, I will still do my research, you know, I will still ask yeah, around, but at least that shows me I can maybe subscribe to the smaller bets. I can uh -huh. subscribe to the fact that you are the right people because I talked to you now like three times. I really like you. You know, or uh -huh. another bet might be that this could be a really interesting play for TikTok or whatever. Like I don't, or like in your case, uh -huh. webinars. You know, and you don't have like a webinar. Uh -huh. I did something I can subscribe to. That's not like that's a little bit smaller. That's more in my wheelhouse. You know, I can subscribe to the fact that I believe that maybe let's say another five hundred k get you far enough. Like stuff uh -huh. I know about because you already got the credibility involved of the experts. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. So basically what you're saying is like, uh, instead of thinking about those like accelerators and stuff, it's like, uh, start here. never hurts to, start yeah, here. to talk to more expert yes. people and try to get them on board and they will transfer their credibility onto the company that like automatically includes us. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that this is good. my opinion. Okay, like. Well, your opinion sounds sounds reasonable. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> Let's go with reasonable. Yeah, that's a good. That's, that's how far we as far as we go here. <laughs> your opinion sounds reasonable. Um, so, I personally believe, like in the current stage where you're at, this will bring you more. Yep. Like this is more bang, bang for the buck because those are experts that can give you very specific feedback and so on and so on. Accelerators are really really good if you don't know yet, for example, what are you going to build. They're really good if you, mm -hmm. for example, don't know how to pitch or fundraise or anything like that. You know. They're really good mm -hmm. for all the generics, like how to hire, how to manage, all this kind of stuff. They're really good to create urgency, you know, they, in, in your mm -hmm. team, in you, and like all this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I don't think you necessarily need this right now, if this makes any sense. This is interesting. You know what I mean? What, yeah, you, well, what you need yeah. right now is like a product that hits like this spot for your customers, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're focused on. But you know, we can't deny also the prestige of like YC or you know some like big accelerators. Sure, sure. Can... Like if you want, go in. Uh, my main advice is don't overestimate uh, how much these accelerators can actually help. In the end, you still work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. the other problem is like even if you have demo day, uh, if you like, for example, we had demo day like this week with YC. Okay. Mm -hmm. The the startups that didn't manage to, let's say, like in a month from now, haven't raised proper amounts of money, like mm -hmm. most likely investors won't touch them for several months because they assume yeah. that all the other investors look at them. Like there's, like there's downsides to accelerators. There's the equity dilution, mm -hmm. there's signaling risk and so on and so on, you know. I personally have a yeah. very, very high opinion of YC and I recommend everybody to do mm -hmm. it, you know. That being said, you don't need it. Also, like you don't need to raise like if you do this here and you get those experts involved, yeah. very likely they will just help you without like you needing to give them equity. You know what I mean? And then if you want that to, sounds good. you know, and so on and so on. Like if you can just don't even raise it all. Um, cool. Um, cool, cool. Uh, Dimitro, uh, we have 2,200 people, maybe 2,300 people watching. How can they help nice. you? What would be useful? What do you want? Like, like, like shout out, like what would be cool for you? Uh, so, uh, I mean, we already uh, see, have seen the product. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've presented the product. I'm happy with that. Uh, your advice on like the... No, no, no. How can the people in the, in, the, in the audience right now, like uh, people in the audience, before you yeah, leave, like what to, can it do for you? Just go to edity.ai and see whatever, you know, works for you. If you want to try out the video, try out the video. If you want to chat with me, just go and support chat. I'm the only one in support chat, so you'll chat with me. If you want to schedule a demo, let's schedule a demo. Let's talk. Any, any, anything that that might be potentially helpful for you from our perspective, or like the feedback for us from your perspective, would be awesome. Okay, cool. That sounds good. Sweet, uh, Dimitro. Thanks, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Andres. Cool. Thank you. Sweet. That was awesome. Um, so guys, uh, what do you think? Like, how is this so far? Is this useful? Um, what do you think? Like, 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 throw me your feedback. Um, you can also like uh, throw in in the. Um, you can also throw it into the Twitter chat. I'm trying to read it as well. Um, unfortunately, I can't do both. Um, it doesn't really work right now yet. You know, but uh, you get the idea. Um, before we go to our next one, Mike, um, um, I have to do one thing, uh, unfortunately, because this is like in the end, you know, we need to all make money. Um, I have to do, um, this is embarrassing, uh, but you know, money rules the world. I have to do a quick sponsor break. Um, yeah, I'm very sorry for this. Um, I will try to make it quick, okay? This is a uh, sponsored stream, um, and yeah. So, okay, cool. So the sponsor of today, wait a second, I need to, I'm actually on the wrong slide, give me one second. Mm. How do I, one second. One second, I'm on the wrong slide. Okay, now we're talking. Sorry for this, I hope they still pay me. Okay, so guys, this stream is sponsored by Shilshare.com. Shilshare. Shilshare. 
Okay. Shillshare.com. You're asking what is Shillshare.com? Okay. You have too many bad investments. You invested in completely overpriced seed rounds in 2021. You have worthless tokens that are, you know that they don't make any money. You know they're useless. And you have portfolio companies that will never IPO. Guess who is here to help? Shillshare.com. Shillshare.com. Shillshare. I bet I need to make the ASMR thing. Shillshare. Shillshare is the best platform to dump your useless tokens to the public. Okay? We all know how this works. Okay? Pre-mining. You bought a little bit of equity, you get a fuck ton of tokens, and now you can throw them to the public thanks to Shillshare.com. You can syn send syndicate deals to completely beginner angels. My recommendation is also maybe like write a book or like do a blog post or something about this. You have like your investments that don't work, okay? Just invest at a lower valuation and send them to some beginner angels. Tell them that it's an amazing deal. It's deal bear deal carry, you will make money. Shillshare is here to help. Number three, spec your overfunded never IPO companies, okay? These companies will never IPO, throw them to the public market for respect. Shillshare is here to help. It's about markups, markups, markups. Shillshare can help. Shillshare is the thing. Go to shillshare.com now. Thank you so much for sponsoring Tada. And if you call right now, you get Shillshare Pro for free. You're asking, what is Shillshare Pro? Thank you for asking. Shillshare Pro is the ultimate thought leader product. Shillshare will help you setting up your own podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Your own podcast. Don't worry about preparing or knowing any subject matters. Don't know about the details about what you're talking about. Don't even worry about being accountable when you have wrong statements. Like, nobody will ask, like, next month or next week. Just ramble your worldviews, share your political opinions, throw them in, ramble for hours. Plus, shill your own companies and talk how other VCs are tricking retail investors with tokens, with syndicates and SPX. Shillshare.com is your thing. Go to Shillshare.com. Okay, that's a sponsor break. Um, thank you so much to Shillshare.com, uh, our sponsor of this week. Um, you know how hard it is to get like good sponsors for this kind of stuff. So I always appreciate when uh, people reach out to streamers and help with this kind of stuff. Cool. Thanks so much for Shillshare. If you want to sponsor next week, let me know, okay? Um, we have having sponsor blocks every week. And now let's go to our next company. Omnipilot AI. Give me one second to just tell you, Mike is here, awesome. Hey Mike, um, I'm getting you now on the stream, okay? Like, um, like maybe don't be naked, one second. Okay, he's dressed, perfect. Yes, hello. Hey Mike. Hello, nice to, nice to meet you. Cool, Mike. Um, what do you want to get out of this? What would be useful? Um, I think it'd be good to get sort of a bit of a review of the company from you. We had a bit of a chat on Twitter about mm -hmm. like how you're thinking about the space or not thinking about it as well. Um, and yeah, also, obviously, it's great to have 2,000 viewers like look at the product and review it and send me DMs telling me how bad it is or good it is or whatever. Um, and also, yeah, seems like a fun, fun way to spend 20 minutes. Okay, awesome. Um, tell us a bit about yourself uh, and tell us yep. a bit about Omnipilot. Um, and no pressure, 2,300, 400 people right now, okay? Everybody's watching Mike, no pressure at all. Like, let's be cool here, Perfect. okay? Um, who are you? And like, uh, maybe screen share and tell us a bit about like your product. Or actually, yeah, can you, like, um, you, can, you, can, you can demo it on your actual machine, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Fuck, let's do this. Yes. Let's do this. Okay, this is a good show, cool. guys. Nice. Um, let me show. Um, yeah, I'm Mike. I'm a solo founder um, of Omnipilot. Omnipilot is an AI assistant for all of Mac OS. So it works in every text box and every app on Mac so um, that you kind of use GPT. But actually, in the context of the app, it will pull context from the app. So I've got um, a couple demos here. This is from like my landlord telling me that there's mold at my house. Wait, so this is say, this is for real? Is like, do you have mold in your house? Uh, it's yes, but it's only in one of the rooms. Anyway, uh, it's classic UK London problems. Anyway, okay, okay. Uh, I used to live in London. I, I feel that they've reached 
out and booked. So I've just then uh, opened up OmniPilot. I've given it the prompt to confirm they've reached out and booked. Uh, OmniPilot is going to like create a contextual response to that email. Oh, nice. Because it can read the full um, contents of Gmail there. So I'll just send that because that sounds good to me. I've got another one here. This is from a guy I chatted with a little bit recently. Um, I sort of didn't manage to respond to him yesterday, but uh, say, say soon, um, maybe in two weeks, let's chat. So um, it's going to do the same again. Okay. <laughs> it, was, I was too, it sort of just did the exact thing. Uh, so instead I'll say, um, write a pro email soon, two weeks. There we go. And now I had to just redo it again because of that, but it'll it'll write the full pro email. I can leave that going while I then go to like Xcode because it's actually typing it straight into the app. It's not even like just totally taking over my computer. Um, my product also works as a co-pilot everywhere on Mac. Like it'll auto complete text and you can press tab to complete. So if I'm filling out a structure and I've got all these in it things to do, uh, I can just type self and then I'll just, um, you know, suggest the text. Xcode doesn't have um, a copilot, so it's pretty helpful to be able to just. One second, have... one second. Xcode doesn't have a copilot? Yeah, Xcode has no copilot. Jesus every fucking iOS Christ. Dev, Jesus Mac fucking Mac Christ, I didn't They're know that. They're more dogging their code right now. <laughs> I did not know that. Holy shit, this is how you live? Holy fuck. Mold and well, no, no mold and no copilot. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm experimenting with. Um, with like sort of also marketing kind of more directly to people using Xcode. That's smart. But like it's a copilot that works um, for Xcode. And then yeah, the final place I wanted to demo it was just maybe like um, maybe here. Um, so this is your remote first capital apply to join it as a startup form. Oh shit. Table. Oh shit. <laughs> um, and like I, I actually like using Claude Opus more than uh, GPT-4 Turbo mm -hmm. or whatever. But uh, Claude Opus gets overloaded when San Francisco wakes up. And so it makes it a super unreliable product experience. So we're using 4Turbo. The replies won't be as good as a result. But um, re uh, apply for Omni. All right, but, and then, yeah, it'll just be able to... Okay, that's know. cool. So like it has already all the context. You don't need to provide the context locally. Yeah, for sure. So I, I basically just given it my website, my name. I'm the founder and CEO. That's it. It's pulled this context from the website. So it kind of knows about that. Um, I'm building a memory system so uh -huh. that it can kind of remember stuff that I type over time and things that I see and kind of pull it in with rag. Um, sort of works, sort of, you know, still working on it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so now uh, let's just do this one. I don't even need to actually give it a prompt because it'll just try and guess what I would write in this box. So for some stuff, okay, so it didn't, it didn't do a great <laughs> job. Uh, it's, try, it's trying to actually now reply to, I think, all of the questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting. So yeah, like when you when you don't prompt it, yeah, it'll be a little less reliable. But, I've uh, seen hey, networks of remote founders and investors could provide invaluable insights. That's legit the stuff that everybody throws in there. That's funny as yeah. fuck. Anyway, so yeah, that's on pilot. Um oh yeah, the final thing, also kind of cool, uh, would be like, right, like let's select all the text on your mm -hmm. website and then just say summarize Andreas. Um and you can do this kind of any text on any website and it'll uh just do that. So Opus seems to be working. This is good. So interesting. Okay, cool, cool. cool. So um, walk me through how does this technically work? So I assume you have like a desktop app running somewhere in the background that has like access to yeah, your yeah. Uh, accessibility features and can like interject with everything. Is this correct? Yep, that's correct. So it's an accessibility um, Mac OS app. So there's normal Mac OS app, you enable the accessibility permission and it can pull uh, uh -huh. the context that's relevant. Okay, so uh, then, okay, yep. makes sense. Um, and in the background, what you base, what do you do? You like, do you, you send everything like is now all my information sent to uh, uh, a cloud or like to to ChatGTP or like what's what's happening in the background? Is this running sure. locally? Is um, it running so, to server? So everything apart from the model itself is running locally. I mm -hmm. have had it running locally. Like when I go on flights, I set up a Llama CPP model and I run it locally. It's just a little slow and it's also not that good. And so. The mm -hmm. like kind of end user product experience I'm aiming at is definitely still cloud models, but everything else is local. So I don't store any of the memory, any of the data that I'm picking up uh, anywhere, and all the APIs don't store it either. Mm -hmm. So you have to be sort of comfortable and trusting that their public policy is like correct as they say it. They're mm -hmm. not storing the data. Mm -hmm. As long as you're comfortable with that, then 
that's kind of okay. And I see the button you can that. switch to the local LLM as well if there's one. Yeah, this is this. These are the dev buttons, so these mm -hmm. aren't actually for uh, <laughs> prod, but it's for me so I can switch to local LLM. Okay. There'll be a point where local LLMs are so good that it is totally worth doing local, mm -hmm. and I'll probably get to that point in a couple of months with a couple more like random open source releases. Mm -hmm. okay. um, when you aren't triggering it, um, it it won't do anything unless you've got autocomplete on. Mm -hmm. Autocomplete will be pulling the contacts as you type and sending it to get mm -hmm. the responses and stuff. But you can just turn that off or only enable an X code or you know whatever kind of works for you there. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. Um, what would be useful for you? Like, what do you like? What that kind of help or how can we help? Um, I guess like you know, obviously, I think every day about like what uh, what challenges I had and how I'm going to navigate them and that sort of stuff. I'm curious what you think the sort of major challenges for a product like this in getting to you know 10 million ARR, million ARR um, are. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Next one. I just thought maybe you've seen, you've seen hundreds of hundreds of startups and helped them. Um, them so. I have a few thoughts before, but before I remember, like, what do you think is the biggest challenge? Um, so right now, I would say there's two challenges I'm focused on. One is just kind of getting enough growth in the top of the funnel. Mm -hmm. I've never really done that before, and I'm starting to do it now, and it's kind of going okay. So got got that got like the beginnings of that started, but it is just me working on it. I'm mostly a technical guy, so learning and figuring out how to do growth in an efficient way that pays mm -hmm. back its money. Um, then secondly, like actually changing people's habits, uh, like, you know, in the onboarding and also just generally like, reminding them that there's this now, now a totally new option. Mm -hmm. You can just kind of, instead of typing the full response, you can just ask the AI to do it. Um, that is... That is sort of a, a, a different way of working, you know, and obviously people are used to going to chat GPT and back. And so this sort of chat thing is just a drop in replacement for that. So that's relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. But the in context generation, which I think is super powerful, mm -hmm. you know, it, it took me like a few months of having it available to start kind of trying it out in every email and um, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. great compelling onboarding that gets people into that habit. How many users do you currently have? Um, I've got about 30 something daily mm -hmm. active. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got about 600, 700 of MRR, something mm -hmm. like that. Do you know what they use it most for? Um, the Mostly sort of emails. And then some people like are using it for like writing docs and just like quickly generating a paragraph about this, paragraph mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's about maybe six or seven who are Xcode devs who are just like, oh my God, the fact that I can now like generate code and autocomplete code in Xcode is like very, very like, wow. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like a second class citizen. Coding uh, <laughs> I, I still can't believe that this is like not a thing. Uh, how many it's coming are... probably in June? So, you know, this is a small window. Yeah, but that's like a few think. months. Um, so my, my number one advice here is let's let's look at this as like from the point of view of a business that wants to make money and uh, yep. not necessarily like a VC case. OK, yep. the VC Great. case here is like there is hundreds of um, um, assistants right now. Yep. And I will do the same feedback I gave before about positioning, niching, mm -hmm. noise in the market, and like, how is this yeah. different? You know, like, it's really hard yeah. to invest in this. But yeah. this is an awesome thing to make money. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, because you got already all the hard stuff done, like it technically works. Mm -hmm. And now you can yeah. figure out different use cases for it. Right? Yeah. Uh, my gut feeling here, and it's, this sounds like stupid, but like, try a ton of stuff. And mm. my this is all like, okay, you do whatever you think is right. If you end up successful, mm. you are right. Okay. Mm. Everything else I'm saying now is just like random me rambling, you know, because I'm hyped I'm just, up. I'm just going to follow everything you do and I'll email you telling you, what the fuck, address? Nothing works. Okay. I have insurance okay. for that. I have insurance. Oh, yeah, for good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, my gut feeling here is what I would try is it's easier to position products that are uniquely made for a niche, it's easier to yeah. position them like individually hmm. than as like one big thing, okay? Yeah. So what I would think about is, can you build um, a co-pilot for Xcode and give it a cool yeah. name, you know, like this one? Maybe even give it like an own website, for example, Xcodepilot.com. That would be like a really good idea, you know? 
I have that. It, yeah. it really works here Perfect. for now, but I can just make it. <laughs> hey, dude, 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 I'm trying to give here advice that looks very, uh, like, smart, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're assuming that me, after 10 minutes, uh, come up with better ideas than you, like, after working on this for months? No, <laughs> no freaking way this is going to happen. But, okay, is there something you can do like Xcode, but for other stuff? I assume there's, like, email clients on Mac that don't have autocomplete, you know? Yeah, I mean, even Mac... Uh, Apple Mail doesn't have autocomplete. Apple Mail, perfect. That's a huge one. Yeah. Uh, Outlook on Mac is like huge, you know? Yeah. I almost yeah. wonder if there is a way you can pick old school Mac desktop apps, you know, that yeah. would benefit from AI mm -hmm. that just don't yeah. have AI and yeah. milk them and realistically milk them for half a year until like the general purpose gen uh, um, AI That's assistance it. by... Anthropic and Co are like really, really good, you know, milk them yeah. for half a year. Um, but like the, milk. <laughs> there is a ton <laughs> of um, desktop apps that are still used and people won't change them and they're using it there for yeah. the daily job, you know? Yeah, totally. You're opening um, a page or is this not working right now? No, no, I was just looking up what, like different domains of other domains I can buy to uh, <laughs> make these niche things. Cause... Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Do you already have like some of them? Well, I've got the Xcode one because that was like super obvious. Like I use it every day nice, and I'm like, nice. wow, this is like totally much better. Um, I was thinking like Gmail pilot, you know. Mm. Google, uh, Google, I think, will just like own that. Uh, or differently put, I would, you, you can try it, why not? My recommendation yeah. is pick stuff where nobody gives a fuck about, you know? Yeah. Uh, a yeah, friend yeah, of yeah. mine made $5,000 a month for mm -hmm. multiple years for a plugin mm -hmm. in some random old Apple Mail version that just mm. converted some random Outlook files to something they could wow. use. You know yeah. what I mean? And he made like yeah. two to five thousand dollars a month for years until like that, that dried up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. he still does. Um, so um, I would see if there's like, like I would literally look, go like to, to, I don't know, like the random shops you have in your neighborhood that use Mac for like really weird stuff, you know, mm, look yeah. what they use and just be like, hey, that might be interesting. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. Um, do, and do you think it would will work better, like not having it like always basically like actually rebuilding the app with a new name, icon, etc. Uh, all of the above? Or do you think that it's, this is my... it's a lot of work? I would do both. I would do. Try both. I yeah. would. I would try both. Literally, I think yeah. it's easier for you to uh, do SEO and uh, ads and everything, you know, and maybe outreach to like some newsletters or forums mm. or something that are specialized on Microsoft mm. Outlook for Apple. I have no idea. You yeah. Know? Um, if that thing looks specialized on it, you know, because if SEO wise, the domain authority stuff is. It's better to have one big domain with loads of authority than lots of little ones, it, or, um, or not really. I will do like a special session on SEO. Um, I okay. I That'd have awesome. an opinion on this, but like I don't mm -hmm. want to be cancelled on SEO Twitter right now, uh, so I won't share it. It'll be great for the um, get more followers. Yeah, 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 of, yeah. Like hate loads of, e e loads of Elon bucks. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> like imagine being like, do you know how competitive SEO people are? Like when they flame yeah, you, they yeah, flame yeah, you yeah. hard. Like I'm not even going there. <laughs> um, but like uh, to go back, even if like, so personally, I think there's an opportunity to, for SEO optimization. And also um, there's an opportunity to just like have very, very targeted landing pages and products that mm -hmm. don't feel overwhelming. Yeah. Like if I yeah, recommend to my aunt for Apple Mail some plugin that can do mm -hmm. five trillion things, sh she won't use it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so like that's my gut feeling. And you can still do like one specific landing page for a generic tool, you know? And yeah. you can still have like some sort of like an upsell to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like do you still upsell to the big one? Um, yep. Yeah. And that's that my that's my take here. Like uh, and, and honestly, I think you can easily milk this for like half a year to a year. And while you do yeah. that, you will have like a ton of other ideas that where you can go further and further. You know, yeah. like we, we're talking several hundred thousand dollars, uh, a million, something like that in the next yeah. 12 to 18 months. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. That's my take, at least. Chat, um, please throw in your opinions on this. Like, um, I'm, I'm like oh, yeah. literally talking out of my ass here. So, like, if you guys have like ideas or like anything you can like add here, like, please throw this in the chat. 
Um, I'm also like reading the Twitter thread, by the way. It's just I can't share this uh, um, on the on the stream, unfortunately. Sweet, um, Mike. What would cool. be useful for you um, from the audience? Um, definitely like feedback, and if anyone wants to try it, let me know. Um, sites omnipilot.ai. If anyone has any ideas for cool apps that they think that this would be great if it worked in, like Andreas mentioned, all these random old apps that they use or anywhere that you write on Mac that you're like, oh, you know, it's kind of weird that I, I have zero AI here or you're co anywhere that you're constantly copying and pasting stuff into chat GPT and back. And you just wish that you could actually just like ask questions about it, like right there and then. Mm -hmm. That's super, super helpful because then every single one of those could just turn into like a sort of landing page that maybe converts 20 people a month to pay mm -hmm. users, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that'd be, that'd be awesome. Help do my thinking for me. Make me money, basically. You can make <laughs> me money. That'd be so good. How can you reach so, out to you? Uh, so my Twitter is Michael Jelly, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-J-E-L-L-Y. Mm -hmm. um, the site is omnipilot.ai. My email is mike at omnipilot.ai, um, et cetera. Sweet. Super fun. Awesome. Mike, thanks so much for joining. Um, Thank you. If there's anything else, like, you know, you have my Twitter, you just ping me, okay? Perfect. Sweet. Great to meet you. Mike, Peace. see you later. So, let me quickly switch back to Keynote. So, this was Omnipilot. Like, uh, folks, what are you thinking? What, what is your opinion on this? By the way, I personally, right? Mike was awesome. Uh, I personally prefer companies. So, so I am a strong, so, so we had a question in the chat before. Um, the question was, let me quickly copy paste it. Um, sweet. So that was the question by Resin before. Um, a common startup advice I've heard is, uh, basically avoiding building on other people's product APIs, right? Um, it depends for what, right? This is my take. Um, my, my per this is my personal opinion, okay? And you guys, you, you do you. Um, if it's not for a VC, like, like if it's not for a VC case, but like for you building products and making money, it's freaking genius to build on top of other people's API. It's like the best thing you can do. Like all the hard work is already done and you like just need to get the little corners right, you know? Um, all of them potentially have like, you know, a time to live. Like if you're building an AI for interior design, there's a high chance after like half a year, you know, that might no longer work really well. Or like in this case, like autocomplete for Gmail, like maybe in half a year it doesn't work anymore. But for half a year, you can like charge ridiculous amounts of money. You can make you can make a lot of money. I think right now the best thing you can do as a, a solo founder or builder is uh, leverage this kind of stuff. Like pick a niche you care about and build a product on top of these APIs. Why do people recommend that you should avoid building on a product of somebody else's API, right? This has more to do with investment. Um, let me quickly share screen. So, and by the way, guys, if you have any other questions, like throw them into the chat and also like throw me your general opinion on this, on this whole session today on the chat. Like I'm kind of doing an outro now, like we're doing like five more minutes and then we're good, okay? Um, so, um, building on other people's API, okay? What's the risk here? Let's just say you're an investor, okay? Uh, let's say you are a so-called rapper startup on top of OpenAI. This is OpenAI and this is you, right? You have two problems. Number one, any major improvement that you use and you wanna do will be capped by the capability of the platform. If you wanna do GPT for X, you know, there's a certain limit you can go and that limit is defined by the platform. If the thing cannot do X properly, you're basically grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding for each little improvement. That by itself is okay. You know, like that's how startups are. That's how building a product are. 
and you're like at 80 percent you go to 81 82 83 percent like you, you're fighting for each little percentage with little improvements and then there's a new version of chat gtp that by default is better than what you do and you start again and that's really really exhausting because it means in in a, in a nutshell if the core of your product is like an llm your product will be limited by the capabilities of this llm and of course they get better and so on and so on like there's a whole discussion around that um, a little bit healthier thing to do usually is have a core of a product and use LLMs. So you have the LLM like for certain parts, but like the main product is still something else. Or differently put, I would not invest in a customer care tool that like builds to completely on LLMs. I would invest in a very, very good, I mean, I don't, but like investors, um, would invest in a very, very good customer sol customer care solution that uses LLMs really cleverly in some aspects, but you still need to build all the, the little details around the, the customer problem, like the, the, the product problem in general. So that's number one. You're always limited by the capabilities of this one, okay? Uh, the second problem you have is any competitor who pops up has like 80% of your thing by default. So they launch, they have 80% of your product. This is really, really tough. Yeah, it's a, it creates a really, really noisy market. Um, my personal POV here is awesome space to build, horrible space to invest. And that's not your problem. That's an investor's problem. Your, your job is to build shit, make money, provide for your family, you know. Uh, investors want to invest stuff that can be easily defended and so on. So like this is their problem. So what they usually do is like we discussed this before, they look is it enough, innovative enough? Do you leverage UX changes enough? Do you do like something really interesting? Are you maybe going into like a potentially really, really big area that can be completely rethought through AI and so on and so on? There are good investment cases like this. The problem you have is just very quickly, there's tons of competitors. So it's a very lousy space in my opinion to invest, but that's why like most of them stay away from that. Cool. Um, where is the question again? Thanks, um, Aration. Sweet, folks. Um, that's it for today. Um, what's what's your opinion on this? Um, like, I would love if you can send me your opinion. Like, um, DM me. Um, I'm thinking of doing this um, weekly now. Thanks, uh, Ehrlich, for for asking. Um, one thing I want to do, let me quickly check if I have a slide for that, actually. No, I don't. So one thing I want to do is next time I want to do also content. So today we only did um, uh, 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 like like demos and founders, which is cool. Like I want to do this in future as well. Um, but I, there's also like a lot of topics that I think are really, really interesting that are worth just like having a proper session on, right? Um, that frequently get under discussed but also like just help a lot of people and just like have a deep dive into one topic you know what i mean so uh, that's something i want to add next week um i will not yet say what it is but i already know it i already have the right people and it will be fucking epic okay i want to do this weekly okay um <laughs> Uh, Michael just asked in the chat if it will be an SEO deep dive. Um, nope, it won't be an SEO deep dive. Holy frick, no. Um, it will be a different topic. It, in my opinion, way more exciting topic. Um, so uh, I, I want to do this weekly. Uh, Friday, same time, uh, one to two hours. Um, if this stuff is useful, okay? And for this, I need your feedback. Like DM me uh, what was good, what was bad. Okay, this is a better run. Like this is the first time I've ever done this. I managed to not leak my uh, Bitcoin wallet, which is a huge win. Um, I, I didn't expect much more. Like this is already good, you know. Um, yeah, like DM me uh, what is useful. My DMs are open. Okay, um, what was good? What was bad? What could be done differently? What suggestions do you have? Um, if you want to join the next session, uh, DM me as well. Um, I. Honestly, I, I don't know yet how to properly structure this, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Guys, uh, thanks so much for, for, for tuning in. Uh, we have now 2,600 viewers, which is absolutely insane.
like legit, legit insane. Um, I expected, and this is no joke. I was happy with 50. <laughs> I expect 50 views max. Okay, so this is this is freaking bonkers. Before you all leave, I would like you to do one thing, um, and this is go to one second. I have to open it myself before I show you. Go to TV Algora and go to slash pair live I'm like, it's just on twitter so it's not many um he will as far as i know go live in a very short bit so let me quickly for this here uh pair is going live if he's still doing it pretty much now okay he's awesome he's one of the best founders in commercial open source i highly recommend you to go there um just go to uh uh, uh, uh algora um Click on this link, and I hope he's already started. I don't know. Uh, go to Pear. He's one of the best founders in commercial open source. He's literally the face of the whole movement. Check him out, um, and I'll leave you otherwise. Be thanks so much for being with me tonight. Um, it was really much fun. Send me any feedback you have as a DM, OK? Uh, next time, I will try to have the chat a little bit more functional. Uh, thanks for everybody who joined in uh, discussion. Thanks for everybody who had, um, wait, he's tomorrow? Oh, I fucked this up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Paris tomorrow. That's my bad. Uh, anyway, <laughs> in that case, go tomorrow. Uh, oops. Uh, I was pretty sure it's today. I'm very sorry. Um, uh, yeah, like, thanks to everybody who tuned in. Uh, thanks to Toby. Thanks to Dimitri. Thanks to Mike. Thanks to everybody who joined for the calls. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Uh, we, I want to do this every week. If you have ideas for topics, please send them to me. If you want to join the, as a founder, please uh, DM me. If you have any feedback, please DM me. And we are going out right now. And that has been it. Bye. Bye. Thanks, folks. This was awesome. See you all somewhere else. Bye-bye.